At the current pace, most climatologists agree we'll be about two degrees Celsius hotter in 50 years and three degrees hotter by the end of the century. But there's a scientific revolution underway to combat climate change. Technology is moving fast. But can it outpace a warming world? The Earth's climate has always changed, but rarely this fast. In just 250 years, the planet has warmed by one and a half degrees Fahrenheit, almost one degree Celsius. If we don't stop the increase in overall global emissions by 2015, most scientists agree a two degrees Celsius warmer world is inevitable. And that means weather, the likes of which we've never seen. A two degree increase in temperature can lead to water stress in several parts of the world. By 2020, in Africa alone, there'll be between 75 to 250 million people who would be affected by water stress as a result of climate change. We know what's causing the problem. Greenhouse gases like methane and carbon dioxide act like a blanket around our planet and greenhouse gases are increasing at an ever-quickening rate. Trees absorb carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. They play a critical role in controlling the planet's climate. So wouldn't large-scale reforestation offset global warming? It could, but there's a problem. We're running out of land. But science may have just come up with an alternative. What we call artificial trees are technologies for doing what trees do in respect to carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, namely they pull the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and put it in a form that will stay out of the atmosphere so that you don't get the warming effect of the CO2. This magic plastic has long been manufactured for its use in water softeners. But nobody had thought to use it for its natural ability to absorb carbon dioxide. We realize that this material, this plastic you see here, actually absorbs the CO2 when it's dry and releases it again when it's wet. Now that they've made the breakthrough, Alan and Klaus are designing and building a full-scale artificial tree. When finished, it will have a central drum containing panels of the special plastic and a humidity control system. By altering the moisture levels, the artificial tree will first absorb and then release the CO2 for permanent storage. The vision of the future for these kind of artificial trees is that they can capture the carbon dioxide nobody else can capture. That's their advantage, that is their strength. A single tree will absorb about one ton of carbon dioxide a day, about 75 cars worth. 60 million of them could potentially absorb all the CO2 we currently emit. And the good news doesn't stop there. This is one of the few options available to actually go back and reduce the carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere from the level we are already at or will be in 50 years from now back down to where it is safe. And because carbon dioxide levels are the same everywhere around the planet, Forests of artificial trees could be planted right on top of the best storage sites. The real challenge is where to store billions of tons of carbon dioxide. The solution to that could be found here, in the magnificent sandstone canyons of Utah's appropriately named Carbon County. Sandstone is a terrific storage medium because even though it looks solid, it's actually very porous. There's lots of pore space. In fact, 10 to 15 percent of the rock matrix itself is actually pore space that usually holds water or brine. And we're looking at injecting CO2, replacing that water or brine with CO2. If their natural seals hold, the potential storage capacity of geological formations like sandstone is huge. If we are to avoid the effects of a two degree hotter world, Individual efforts to reduce emissions by conserving energy at home and work will need to become second nature. The most important single thing 
that human society can do to reduce its impacts on the global climate is increasing the efficiency with which we use energy. But if measures like these are not adopted, a three degree hotter Earth could undergo a series of irreversible changes. The nightmare scenario for scientists, three degrees Celsius hotter, that's nearly five and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Some scientists say this may be the tipping point when changes in the world's climate could cascade out of control. Three degrees Celsius global warming would mean we're talking about a different planet. It's a planet that hasn't existed for millions of years. Uh, there were no humans on the planet when it was three degrees warmer. Not only sea level would be different, but climate zones would be shifted. Um, it would be a very different planet. And with a three degree Celsius rise, the Amazon rainforest isn't the only ecosystem that would be lost. So would what's called the permafrost zone, which stretches from Alaska through Siberia and Northern Europe. Permafrost is soil that has been frozen since the Ice Age. Trapped within it are layer upon layer of organic matter that never fully decomposed. The permafrost is already beginning to thaw, allowing microbes to break down its ancient carbon and release it as greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. Estimates suggest that as much as 1,500 billion tons of carbon is trapped in the permafrost zone, the equivalent of 150 years of emissions at current rates. Even worse, there is an unknown amount of methane locked in the permafrost, the greenhouse gas more than 20 times as dangerous as CO2. You could imagine, in the worst case, a kind of runaway feedback in which we put some greenhouse gases in the air from burning fossil fuels mainly, we warm up the system, we melt the permafrost, and this other carbon comes out and adds to the problem. So we've got a kind of time bomb sitting there of greenhouse gases. The sheer volume of greenhouse gases that could be released from the permafrost would likely push average temperatures much higher than three degrees Celsius. If global warming exceeds three degrees Celsius and the Greenland ice sheet melts, scientists predict a seven meter or 23 foot sea level rise. Like megafires in the Amazon, it would actually cause warming to accelerate. And this goes back to the albedo effect. If the reflective white surface of the ice disappears, all that solar heat is absorbed, and the Earth's climate gets even hotter. Data comes from projects like this one. Antarctic ice built up in layers over millions of years. British climate experts read the past by drilling out and examining ice samples, or cores. This ice core is 750,000 years long. If we go back three quarters of a million years, we can see eight climate cycles. So that's eight times we've gone in and out of an ice age. So if we look at those eight climate cycles, we can see what the temperature was doing. But critically also, we can get at the carbon dioxide, the methane, these two greenhouse gases. We can see what levels they were in the ice. And what we find is they're actually remarkably consistent with temperature. They track temperature extremely well. The science related to climate change has reached a level of sophistication and reliability which leaves absolutely no scope for doubt that human beings are impacting on the climate of this Earth. Already, at nearly one degree Celsius warmer, we're seeing small but significant impacts on the natural world. Ecosystem collapse is exactly what's happening in the pine forests of British Columbia. They're being devoured by a beetle that was once kept in check by extreme winter temperatures. Less than a one degree rise is all it took. Early in the decade, the mountain pine beetle population began to quadruple every year. And all over the world, coral reefs, home to 25% of all marine life, are dying 
as the oceans absorb more carbon dioxide and grow increasingly acidic.